Revelation, for instance, as a very scanty to Cornerstone Church of the Acts of the Faith Incorporated, 2516 Halls Mill Road, Mobile, Alabama, 36606. We're excited that you're going to view this video. We ask you to gather your friends and your family around to hear what thus saith the Lord. And if you would like to support this ministry, join us in the work of the Lord, please do so by sending all checks and money orders to True Cornerstone Church, Post Office Box 8836, Mobile, Alabama, 36689-0836. Our weekly services are Sunday school every Sunday at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock a.m., evening worship 6 o'clock p.m. We have our rightly divided word true Bible study every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m., and evangelistic service every Friday night at 7 o'clock p.m. If you're in the mobile area, we encourage you to join us for these worship experiences. Now, listen to this video, listen to what thus saith the Lord, and it will be a blessing to you and your family. Be blessed in Jesus. Truth is grace. Thank God for his mercy. Uh, it endured forever. And we're, we're glad that we're saved and uh, <clears throat> not just talking about it, but living about it. And, and don't mistake, you know, sometimes when you're saved, you may not necessarily feel saved. Some moments of different things may happen in your life, but you can't let that convince you uh, that you're not saved because the devil is in all kinds of feelings your way. Mm -hmm. you know, Send all kinds of tricks to your mind. That's why you have to make sure you keep your mind staying on Jesus so he'll keep you in perfect peace. Amen. But it's a great thing to be saved. And I, I love the fact that I've been born again of water and of the Spirit. Amen. And it's a great thing uh, to be found in the presence of God. Here on this earth, knowing that you love him more than life itself, and that you're willing to obey his holiness. Uh, people habitually find it too difficult, and, and for some reason they, they label it as strict. Uh, God is not strict. God is holy. If you love him, you keep his commandments, and they are not grievous. Yes. And so if they were grievous, then they would be considered strict. They're just right. It's just holy. It's just sanctified. It's just godly. And we ought to be excited about it. Mm -hmm. So you have, to, you have to fall in love with being saved. Yeah. You can't be in love with being saved if you're not in love with righteousness. And if you're not in love with righteousness, you are not in love with God because he is our righteousness. righteousness. So if you're struggling with wanting to live righteously, then you're not in love with God. Yeah, that's right. When you fall in love with living righteously, regardless of what uh, obstacles uh, you may encounter, uh, the stumbling you may experience, and all of the adversity that may come looking for you, because you are in love with God, because you're in love with God, you're in love with his righteousness, you're in love with his truth. And nothing that he speaks to you uh, goes against his will. And when your mind is on him, you want to do his will. And so you accept the righteousness of God. Even sometimes you may struggle uh, uh, executing it for a plethora of reasons but you never question or reject it. You simply obey it. Uh, uh, and some things you have to grow into uh, in terms of becoming uh, better at. How about that? Uh, there are some people you say, but you, just have, you have a problem with your faith. And you have to learn how to put your faith, hope, trust, and confidence in God. And, and sometimes you find yourself in, in your life where you're doubting God. Without even sitting down thinking, well, I'm doubting God. But you'll find yourself walking in, in doubt and frustration and distrust. And realize all of this emanates from my, from my lack of faith in God, from my misplaced faith. Uh, and so that's a weakness. And we work on that and we, we seek God uh, to straighten that out for us. And that's what God does. And so 
it's just a wonderful thing to be committed to godliness. And today I want to talk about the benefits of a godly lifestyle. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. The benefits of a godly lifestyle. And, and you know, we still stand on this. The holiness is still our standard. We stand on holiness, a life separate from the world, a life pleasing to God. And, and we should always ask this question, does my lifestyle please Jesus? Yes. And if you're confident your lifestyle pleases Jesus, whatever it is, then please have no issue with me. Because after all, if it pleases Jesus, then I don't matter. And so your lifestyle must please Jesus, but please don't make the mistake of just saying that it's pleasing Jesus and it isn't. Please don't make the mistake of trying to act like you can change the standard of holiness and, and make God be pleased anyway just because you're you. He's only pleased because you're living according to his holy written word. You don't have to figure it out. It's, it's written. All you have to do is obey what thus saith the Lord. Now, God calls us. He, he, he extends the call to all mankind for he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and people want to live forever, but they don't want to live righteously. Well, you cannot live forever if you're not going to live righteously. All right. And so you have to first obey what thus saith the Lord. In uh, Matthew chapter 22... Uh, we're going to hear, uh, uh, read about a parable of uh, Jesus at a marriage feast, uh, preparing a marriage feast. And listen to, what, listen to this parable, the words, uh, beginning of verse number one. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son, mm -hmm. and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth another other servant, saying, Tell them, tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. All right, so here Jesus gives his parable. Uh, the king's son is going to be married, and the king beckons the people to come. And they found it impossible to answer the call, the request of the king. Now, the highest office in the land is the king. The king has the authority, the power uh, to give you life, to take your life away, extend your life, take your life away, to take your property away, to do what, pretty much what he wanted to do. After all, he was the king. Uh, and so the king is saying, come. And folks are finding it impossible to react affirmatively to the call of the king. And so he sends once, no response. He sends again. And uh, tells all things are prepared, come on. And no response, uh-huh. But they made light of it. They made light of it. Uh -huh. And went their ways, uh -huh. one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Uh -huh. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Now, when you tell people, come to church, come get saved, receive Jesus, stop your mess, stop practicing sin, all of this, they look at you like you're crazy, they laugh at you, and they say, oh, that's all right, I, I, I'll just come some other time or... You know, I'm too busy, what have you, and, and you keep calling, you keep inviting. Uh, when you fall in love with Jesus, you fall in love with people. And when you fall in love with people, you fall in love with people for the saving of their soul, souls. So not for you to have the, the, the biggest uh, uh, friends list on Facebook or any other social media or have the most followers on Twitter, uh, but we want souls into the kingdom. And we know heaven rejoices over one soul. And so if we can just get one, we're good. If we just want heaven to rejoice. Wouldn't it be great if heaven were to rejoice 
because of the works you do for the Lord and somebody is persuaded to follow Jesus. Yeah. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that the, the, the masses reject the message of redemption, of salvation. Uh, it was rejected from the beginning. So here Jesus comes on the scene, God in the flesh, yes. extending the call to mankind. And, and they rejected him so much until they crucified yeah. him. Uh, and prior to that, they lied on him, spat on yeah. him, they made up stories and all kinds of ridiculousness. And against this man who was perfect, he was without sin and no guile was found in his mouth. But man found occasion. Uh, to lie on him and, and to and to misspeak and to and to fabricate and ultimately again leading in leading to his uh, his death, uh, not just his death but his crucifixion, and so he died a, a very painful, filthy, gory, awful death. And the whole purpose of his dying was to redeem us back to himself. And so here he comes, and the very people he came to redeem back to himself are the ones who turn their backs on Jesus, him yeah. and would hang him on a tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and they treated them spitefully and slew them. You got to know that when you carry this word, people will Jesus, yeah. treat you in the most yes. awful way. They will come to dislike you. Now order begins in the house of God. Yes, and it does. It's amazing how when you preach and teach and, and propagate the righteousness of God in the church, folks in the church have a problem with accepting the righteousness of God in the church. And so here God is making a call to all to come. Come in the church. God sees where where people are struggling with obeying him. They're not doing what God says. And God says, come, come, come. Listen, repent. You don't have to live the lifestyle that you are living. Come. Yes. Now, in today's church, people are trying to negotiate what's okay and not okay. And so, where we used to just be sanctified and we were obsessed with pleasing God, and now we have folks who say they're saved and they're sitting around uh, trying to be uh, philosophers and, 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 and theologians and professors and deep folks and, and trying to, well, what it really means. What it really means is what it says. Be ye holy for yes. I am holy. And so uh, uh, there are benefits Thank to a godly lifestyle. When you live for God, he protects you. Yes, he does. See, we know that all things work together for good because we love God, and we're the call according to his purpose. purpose. And so he has not forgotten you when you love him. Yeah. See, he loves all mankind. For God so loved the world. Many are called, but few are chosen. For God so loved the world. So all are called, but the chosen are only those who respond to the call. So when God calls you out of your mess, you're going to have to meet God where he is. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's already where you are. He's trying to show you that you're in a he filthy does. place. Yes. You're in an unholy, unrighteous, ungodly place. Yes. You're in a place of perdition. And so you, got, you have to get out of the place you're dwelling and get in the place where God would have you to be. And this is a struggle in the church. And so here, the, 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 the feast is already prepared. Come. Uh, yeah. Come. Yeah. And the, the, the call is made. The invitation is extended. Come. And they were too busy to come. And, and some others, they were, they, they made light of it. And, and they started uh, uh, kill, uh, killing and, 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 and uh, uh, mistreating his messengers. And, and so when folks don't like you because you love Jesus, don't you ever allow your feelings to be hurt. Come on, they, were, they were mad from the very beginning. Yeah. And so you can miscarry your call in Christ, worried about what people think, how they feel, reacting to people's reactions and actions, instead of keeping your mind focused and attention determination on Christ. When you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect, perfect peace. And so the benefits of a godly lifestyle is that we can go and spread this good news and be wholesale rejected 
and still be happy because God is still God. Ain't that wonderful? Right. When you know that you've done what you're supposed Jesus. to do and you said what God told you to say and you live a lifestyle that you're sure is consistent with the written word of God and regardless of what criticism may come your way, you're fine with that, see? And so when, when you accept simply the word of God as his truth, and you walk in it, and so there are some things that people struggle with. God, to, the, the Bible tells women to not pray or prophesy. It's a shame for the woman to pray or prophesy with the head uncovered. Amen, and folks struggle with that and, and don't think it's necessary to cover their heads and think that, and they miss construe, misinterpret the Bible, and consider hair as a head covering. And this is not the Bible study for that, but that's absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't take a genius to read it. And it simply means to be veiled. And your hair is your natural veil. And so in, in the context of, of covered, the Greek word is for veil. And so you are to veil your head before you pray and prophesy. Right. Now some get fancy. Well, it didn't say hats. It said, it said to cover your head. Well, it didn't cover your head. So what, what you parsing about? See, when you love it, you can't get too much of it. All you want to do is do what God says. Yeah. And so it, it becomes second nature to you because you are stuck on obeying That's God. Right. So when people reject it, you don't get mad at no. you. You know, see, the, the love of God and the wisdom of God and the for, and the foresight of God, uh, Paul writes, said, if any be contentious, we have no such custom. So that's fine. There's no reason to fall apart. Uh, uh, th there are some folks who, some churches, say, they teach that, well, we don't wear uh, jewelry. We don't wear uh, uh, earrings, but they wear makeup. Some don't wear makeup, but they wear earrings and jewelry. But what's the difference in putting some earrings in your ear and putting some lipstick on your lips? There is no difference. And so there's a preponderance of ignorance in the church where you criticize another, another church. Well, we don't, that's right, we don't wear, we don't wear makeup. Okay, but you wear jewelry. There is no difference. Right. But but that's not my problem. I'm no. not mad at them because we wear neither one, because we don't we teach what the Bible says and, and we make sure that we are modest in apparel and make sure that we teach our women to dress as becoming holy. Ness and to and to be obsessed with modesty because we may need to make sure that God is pleased with us. You, but there is no contention. No. There's no there's no fight. There's no tension. It's it's okay. It's okay. We trust God. We believe the word of God. See, this is the benefit of a godly lifestyle. It takes all the all the stress and yeah, frustration away right. when you are disagreed with. It's something about standing on the truth of God that kills all arguments against it. I'm not mad because you disagree with me. I'm just going to stay with the words. See, I'm not trying to be deep. I'm trying to be holy. Yes. So he said, be holy, holy. for I am holy. holy. If you told me to come eat from, my, from among them and be separate, I'm not trying to figure out what that means other than come out from among them and be, be separate. separate. But you know, when you carry the message, you're going to be, you're going to be mistreated and, and you're going to be talked about and, and rejected, but that's okay. Now, verse 6 and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Verse 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Now God is our avenger. So we don't, we don't avenge ourselves. We don't go home praying that God gets them. God show them, get them, Lord. Take them. No, mm -mm, no, we pray that God enlightens them and delivers them and saves them and did not save. But we don't go into this thing because they disagree with you. You cop an attitude, now you want God to do something to them. If you are, if you want God to do something to someone because they didn't do what you said, then you don't have the word in you. Right. When you have the word in you, you never want God to attack anyone. That's right. It is the grace and the mercy of God that we ride on, we live in, we, we bathe in. God have mercy on them. Because if it's God's will that we all come to repent, it has to be my will. So my will cannot contradict the will of God. So I can't get mad at you and, and wish evil on you because you don't see it the way I see That's it. That's right. The, the most important thing is see the way God sees it. Jesus. If you see the way God sees it, you're okay. That's right. And, and I promise you, if you always poke down, you always offended because somebody doesn't agree with you, then you need to you need to check what you say you believe. Because if you were comfortable in your beliefs, then you wouldn't be all messed up when folks wouldn't agree with you. That's it. Uh -huh. Come on, Sister G, read on. Then said he to his servants, 
The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore to the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. See, some folks, they act like they're ready. They talk a good game. Some are, some are our career church people. The problem is their hearts have not turned from sin and turned to God. Now, if your heart has not turned from sin, your heart cannot turn to God. Right. The only way your heart's going to turn to God, it has to turn from sin. sin. You can't serve two masters. So you can't love the world and love God. You're going to have to choose. Either you want to be saved or you don't want to be saved. Either you want to live for Jesus or you want to live for Satan. You can't live for both of them. And so you have to arrive at a place of decision. And, 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 and you make the decision because there's either all of Jesus or none of Jesus. He doesn't date you. He's not going to be a part-timer, no. no you're going to either be all the way in or you're out. Yes. There is no betwixt and between when it comes to being committed to the righteousness of God because then you are lukewarm. Yes. And you qualify for being spewed out of his mouth. And none of us wants to be spewed out of his mouth. Now, when we learn to make the commitment to the righteousness, the holiness of God, then we are in a very good, awesome, wonderful, fantastic place, a, a place of benefits. And, and, and it is a result of our godly lifestyle. And you know, don't, let, don't let anyone frustrate you. Well, hey, you ain't perfect. You make mistakes too. Oh, baby, my lifestyle is godly. Mm -hmm. See, some folks come and try to pick you apart. It's just the devil. Because one thing about it, regardless of who disagrees with me, I have one interest, that they be holy. Yes. We all want to be holy. I'm not trying to be more saved than you are. I'm trying to be consistent with the word of God. Yes. I want to make sure my lifestyle pleases God. Whether man is pleased or not is immaterial to me. I couldn't care less. But I'm obsessed with, with God being pleased with my lifestyle. Yes. Be obsessed with God being pleased with your lifestyle. Yes. Again, there's no reason for you to be offended when someone disagrees with your lifestyle. No, we don't go to the movies. We don't go bowling. We don't go skating. Uh, uh, women don't wear pants. They don't wear shorts. And women don't wear, we don't wear tight clothes and short clothes and, and and we cover our flesh, men and women, we cover our flesh and we conceal everything that, that, that the devil might try to take advantage of. We just want to represent God. And some folks say they're saved and they got all kinds of flesh hanging out and they'll come out and the women won't put on a girdle, got their hiney shaking everywhere, got their uh, see-through uh, uh, clothes and, uh, and all of that. You can see their underwear through their clothes and, and then all this kind of nonsense and they still say they're saved. Well, that's not my problem. I, I'm just trying to share the truth with you. So if your pastor and your pastor's wife are not strong enough and wise enough to teach you the truth of God in terms of being holy, that's not my issue. No, we don't we don't wear makeup and jewelry. We don't come to church looking like Bozo the Clown or Mimi on uh, the Jim Carrey show. We don't we don't wear those things. We're a holy people. Yes, we Jesus. dress holy. Mm -hmm. We are comfortable in our dress. Yes. We are comfortable in where we do not go. That's right. What we do not say. That's right. And contrary to what many church folks say, the rules of God apply in my house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so my children can't go where I don't go. Mm -hmm. They can't wear what we preach against and teach against. It simply is not going to happen. It's not even the conversation. It's not a negotiation. But it is an explanation. And through the word of God, you teach them. And you teach them through the word of God and the word of God is what convicts them. And so the children grow up knowing the truth of God whether they whether they choose to live it when they become older out of my house is going to be their, it's going to be their decision. But while they live in my house, they're going to live as holy as they can in the flesh. Because the house rules is what we abide by. Now, you can't be holy and then your 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 home is unholy. Amen. It just can't happen. Right. I'm the pastor, but my daughter keeps horn. My son keeps horn. Both making babies they're all over the place and carrying on. No, that is not the will of God. That is bad representation. Yes, you is. need to read the Bible. You need to look at Eli. You need to see what happened with Eli's sons. You can't have your children running the devil in the church. Absolutely not. They live under your roof. They're, they're yours. And, and you put them up in positions. And you give them responsibilities and leadership in the church. Knowing that the 
they're practicing demons. And, oh, no, God is not pleased. And Jesus. folks look at it, they get mad. Uh, they first of all think you're, you're, you're throwing off on them. I throwing off. I'm trying to help you. Yes. God is seeing this stuff. You can't preach holiness behind this pulpit and that your half is unholy. That's right. I can't say, well, I can't make the people do it. I sure can. I'm the servant of the house. Yes. The servant does the cleaning. Yes. I can make them. I, I keep the house clean. I said that. I keep the yes. house clean. Yes. I said it just like that. And I keep the house clean by keeping sin out of uh, the leadership of the church. You can't lead anybody in worship when you're the devil. And so I know that your lifestyle is filthy. How am I going to call you to lead folks in worship? This is our worship leader, our praise team leader. And they're the biggest devils in the world. No. Jesus. No. So the server's not taking care of the house. You've got to clean the house. Yes, you got to make do. sure that when the master comes, that you've taken care of his property. Yes. Ain't that wonderful? Right. And yeah. so I have no excuse for my you. I can't make them live holy. All I can do is preach it. Or I can make you live holy because I can make you sit down. And so I won't, I'll never stop you from coming to the church, but you won't be in operation because no. uh, this is God's house. And if I let the devil operate in God's house, God's going to get me. And, Lord, I guess who he's not going to get for you? Oh. Won't he get me for you? No, no, no. He's going to he gonna get me for me. And so it says, I ain't going to hell for me. I showed him I ain't going to hell Say that. for you. Say that. And so we hold to the righteousness of God. And so when he made the call, come, come. Now he's calling to the feast, calling to righteousness. He's calling to him, to truth. Come, do what I say. Take advantage. Well, they, they, they evenly uh, 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 received his, his messengers and they killed some and attacked them. And he said the armies are going to destroy them. You don't want God to destroy you. But when you keep fighting this holiness, God will destroy you. Folks in church, fight holiness in Jesus' name. Talking about you are people of God. And all you do is criticize all righteousness. Can't nobody live that. They're so heavenly, they're so heavenly minded and they're earthly good. You a new fool, old fool, and a middle aged fool come too. On, come on, what's wrong man, with you? Yeah. You done lost your mind. Come you can't on, be too oh, heavily oh, no, no. minded. Yeah. My life is hit with Christ and God. God. Where do you think that is? And, and so because the people lack commitment, they lack understanding. They don't like understanding because they're not smart enough. Or, no, not because they're not intellectual, not because they're not well-read enough. It's because they're not committed enough. When you commit, listen, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. When you hunger and thirst after righteousness, Jesus will fill you. He will show you the way. He will give you the information. The struggle comes when folks don't want Jesus. They want to appear to be good religious church folks. And they want they want to appear to be in love and in tune with God because they come and dance real good. And they speak in a tongue and they love to sing. And all they know how to do the church actions and all that. So they know what to do in church. But, but their commitment to righteousness is is not there because every time you take the word of God, I don't, well, I don't see it. I can't understand. I don't see it. No, you lack commitment to righteousness, which means that you lack commitment to God. Now, don't confuse it because you come to church and, commit, and you're committed to the church that you're committed to God. A lot of folks committed to the church but not committed to God. And that's why they have a struggle with accepting the simple truth of God that is in black and white, oh, and red. It's in here. <coughs> All you have to do is accept it, but people struggle because they've not fallen in love with righteousness. And this word is so simple, y'all. You read it, it's, it says what it says, it means what it means, and guess what you do? You accept it and move on. Yes. See, that's the holiness of God. Yes. There is no struggle, there is no contradiction. There's no problem. God said, Oh Lord, you found me. Let me let me let me cover it up. God said, don't do it, don't wear it, don't go, don't say. I'm not trying to negotiate this thing with God because God's not negotiating. I'm not trying to figure that with God. I'm, no, 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 no. God said don't. I'm just not going to. I know this. If I don't do it, I'll be all right. If there's a chance that if I do it, I'll be all wrong, I won't do it. And so we have to fall in love with Jesus, with his truth, with his righteousness, and for us to please him. What verse are you? Nine. Go ahead. Go ye therefore to the highways, and as many ye shall find, be it to the marriage. So those servants went out to the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. 
And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Hold on a second. So they went out to the heads and the highway. They went, they went, they went into the streets, y'all. And there's something about the folks in the world, they don't struggle with truth. Folks in the world, see, once you accept that you're a sinner, that you're not offended by truth. The problem is, in the beginning, was he was going to these folks who said that they believed. Uh, they were committed to truth. And, and, and when you, you testify that you don't go anymore, I don't think, God, I don't do what I used to do. But then you turn around and start doing what you used to do. And when someone shows you your sins, you cop an attitude. And here's the dumb, one of the dumbest things church people say. They too judgmental. For real. For real. Well, don't you think if, if judgment begins at the house of God, God's mercy sends judgment ahead of eternal judgment? And so here he is, loving me enough to show me me. And I'm so full of my stupidity until I'm caught up in y'all trying to judge me. We go out of the courthouse just judging you. All right. Mm -hmm. He's judging you. And he's going to talk to you any kind of way he wants. So when you, <clears throat> when you go to work, they judge you. And if you don't do it right, they send you off. They judge you. They, and the, and the, 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 the verdict is you're fired. They judge you. I want a raise. You go to ask for a raise. It's judgment time. They determine if you qualify for a raise. If you if you earned it, do you deserve it? That's called judgment. Now it's amazing how we can see it in life, but when it comes to the church and we enter this, well, anything goes. And, you know the, the foolishness of of the of God said, "Come as you are," which you can't find in the Bible at all. Come as you are. <clears throat> when you come as you are, you're gonna get in trouble. Now, what verse you just talked about? Verse, uh, 11. 11. Read it again. And when the king came in to see the guests, uh -huh. he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Now, come as you are. The king, the, when, 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 the, when the king prepared, the, the wedding host prepared the garment. You wore the garments that the wedding host prepared. That's right. Mm -hmm. Whatever garments they were passed on is what you put on. Here the king is coming out. He's, he's preparing a, a wedding feast for his son, a marriage feast for his son. And he comes out and he sees this fella. Uh, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So actually, it isn't come as you are. All right. When you get to the door, we have a, dark, a garment for you to put on. So if you're going to come in Christ, you got to dress like Christ says. All right. You can't be a saved woman wearing ungodly clothes. Let me, let me just be y'all, be frank with y'all. Okay. Saved women don't wear pants. Come on now. Saved women don't want their hineys jiggling, jumping. And shit. Saved women don't want their body structures on, uh, to be seen by anyone but their husband. Come on, so, so they're not going to put on pants. No, and that, they're not going to get mad when you talk about pants and you know you're wrong because if you weren't wrong you wouldn't get mad when when you when you criticize me you know you live a boring life you don't go ahead and go ahead and do that i'm not mad that doesn't make me angry i'm very pleased with pleasing god i'm happy yeah. that I, I don't don't do what the world does Jesus. i'm okay with that there's a reason i don't wear short pants because i'm saved and, and just like the woman shouldn't expose hers all not exposed mine because they belong to my wife That's so right. i am Say, ain't that wonderful? Amen. And so when someone has a problem with it, has an issue with it, they don't offend me. I'm, I don't worry about it. I couldn't care less because I'm saved. I'm so saved. I'm so sanctified until I'm at peace with God's word, with his holiness. No problem. No, no issue. Okay, you don't agree with me. That's fine. But I'm going to do what God says. I promise you I don't, I don't cop an attitude. But why would I talk about your pants? You get mad. Hmm. I want to talk about you don't cover your head, woman. You cop an attitude. Jesus. What's wrong with you? If it's okay to God, why are you upset with me? Mm -hmm. Come on. So you know there's an issue. Yeah. You know there's something called insecurity. Yeah. And insecurity is found when you're living a lie. Yes. When you are living an unsure, uncertain lifestyle, then you walk in insecurity. That's why when you tell the gays two men can't be married, they get mad. Yeah, yeah because they are walking in insecurity. See, you try to make it about benefits. No, it's about sin. 
It's about sin. You're trying to lay with another man, man. What you trying to lay with another woman, woman. It's against God's will. But I'm not mad at you. And you ought not be mad at them neither. Because they belong to God, not you. Jesus. Huh? Yeah. So you, you win people to Christ through love, not through compromise, yeah. but through love. Through love. That's not right. through compromise. But you love. Right. And love is not, well, you know. No, no, that's not the love. Love is truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His word is truth. And he is love. His word is love. His word is truth. What I speak is truth. The truth is love because the truth makes you free. That's called love. So when you speak truth and it is rejected, when you, when you, when you bid them to come to the feast of the Holy Ghost, and they say no, and they reject it, and they reject you, and they become violent against you, whether it's in physical violence or, or attitude or emotion, whatever the case may be, they're against you. You can't get mad. God, all you have to do is do what God told you to do. The king sent you out to do a job, do what the king says. He'll take it. When he gets the report, he'll take care of those who, who, who came against you. But you can only start praying that God hurts them. Now, when you walk in holy security, you're fine. I'm telling y'all, there are some, some tremendous benefits to a godly lifestyle. Yes. It's great to live it. Jesus. You just, you just, you walk in a place of peace. Yes, Lord. And regardless of who disagrees with you, it doesn't wreck your day. No, no, because no, you walk in the truth of God. Yes, Lord. God, I love you so much. All I want to do is please you. And I, you know, me, I love to take the, the fool's route. To, I know this. I can't do too much to get into heaven. So I try to do all I can to that's separate or opposite the world so I can make it into glory. Because I know if I don't do what the world does, it won't keep me out of heaven. Uh, I'm positive that if I don't say what they say, it won't keep me out of glory. I know this for a fact. If I don't wear what they wear, it won't keep me out of the presence of God. Yeah. So I'm not trying to part from I'm trying to sit down and negotiate it. I simply want to live it. Be holy for I am holy. I'm so fine with that. So when you come in with the wrong garment, you come in with the wrong garment. God gave you the garment. You come in with a different garment. And don't think they're physical clothes. They are spiritual clothes too. They are spiritual garments. And folks come in to the church and, and, and they start saying that God said and God did say and, 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 and they start making up scriptures. The stuff they talk about the Bible. The Bible doesn't say it. They had their own garments on. But then the king is going to come out and he's going to look over the crowd. He's going to see everybody talking about you are an invited guest trying to take my food and my hospitality when well, you've not had the respect to put on the garment provided you by the host. And so the king gave them the garments and, and so when, he, when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, yes. friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. So sometimes they may get in. That's why the king comes through. That's why the spirit comes through. And he starts regulating the traffic in the house. And it's something about the word of God that finds you where you are. And if you are in the unholy place with no desire to be in the holy place, when the holiness drops in the house, you'll find your way out the doors. Now, there's no reason to be upset or offended to discover so forth and so on because God's truth is always holy and it is embraced by very few that's why the work the country and the world go in the ways of the world that's why they're endorsing things that are clearly contradictory to the holiness of God to the very nature that God created us in is contradictory and folks who say they are religious folks get all up in knots and want to go and beat folks down and and, and all this kind of stuff I'm not marching on DC for no rights for no I'm against homosexuality I'm against it I, I've been against it all my life and so I have one message get right with God I don't want you Man. to be dead I don't want you to contract HIV or AIDS I want 
any of that to happen, I want one thing. I want them to repent yes. and be born again. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. If you have the love of God, yes. there's no way you can you can wish ill on anyone. Amen. It contradicts the love of God. God is love, and, and wishing folks dead is not is not reflective of love. It is reflective of evil and hate. And so when when, when you when you walk in holiness, you walk in tremendous benefits. You walk in peace of mind. You don't walk around all messed up in the head about the stuff that's going on in the world. Oh, yeah, I tell you, look, 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 well, listen, I'm not worried about those things. I know what the Bible told me, tells all of us, the last days, perilous times, mm -hmm. shall come. Shall come. They're here. Jesus. They're here. Jesus. All the prophecies of this Bible is happening. So why am I wasting time fighting the government mm -hmm. when I ought to be turning to God? That's right. He is, the, he is the ultimate governor. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. He's the president of presidents. Jesus, yes, he lord. is the dictator of dictators. Yeah, lord. He is the monarch of all monarchs. He's in control. Yes. When you walk comfortably in holiness, you don't lose your mind worried about they passed this law, passed that one. No, I'm against all of them. I will disagree with them. But I'm not going to lose sleep or I'm not going to fall out over them. God is in control of this thing. I've got greater faith in my prayer to God than I do in my, in my conversation with man. We can talk, we can sit around and fight and talk and fuss all day long and walk away wanting to kill each other. But I'm going to stay at peace. I'm going to stay in Jesus and just go to Jesus with it. And, and so <clears throat> I love this is that when, when you walk in the holiness of God and, and you walk in the benefits of this godly lifestyle, you're in a very small elite group of folks in Christ. And your life is hid in Christ with God. But if you're constantly fighting worldly legislation, all that stuff, your life's not hidden with Christ and God. Mm -mm. Jesus told them when, 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 the, when the, scribes and the, the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees tried to mess with Jesus, I think, I, I want to say it was Matthew chapter 21. They were come talking trash, right, asking questions about the law. And Jesus put this question to them. So they asked the question and said, uh, about about money, mm -hmm. and Jesus asked one question: Whose whose uh, 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 inscription or whatever, whose picture is on that money? Mm -hmm. Caesar's. The render to Caesar that that belongs to Caesar. It's his image on there belongs to him. The render to him what belongs to him. See now you can't have a biblical understanding of we are in the world but not of the world but everything of the world messes your mind up. Yeah. So you go to church man. Wow. You go to church Jesus. man. Yeah. You see everybody every time you see somebody gay you want something to happen to them. You're mad. What you mad about? Wow. God said this day would come. Well guess what? It's here. It's here. So our job is to try to save souls. Share this truth. Not be mad because they disagree with us. It's not my word. It's God's word. I'm not mad at you because you disagree with me. I'm grieved because I see a soul in trouble. I didn't want folks to be saved, see? But you have to walk comfortably in the knowledge of the word. When you walk com comfortably in the knowledge of the word and all this other drama that's going on, you're not involved in that. <clears throat> no, I'm not criticizing Republicans or Democrats. No problem. I disagree with you. But my, my, my time is with Jesus. I need to talk about the truth of God. It is his truth that prevails. It's this truth that convicts and changes. If you want to change people, forget your conversation, your attitude, your perspective, your opinion. Use the word of God. Amen. What does the Bible say? Either you accept God's word or you reject it. But remember, it is God's word and not Gandhi's word. All I do is give you the truth of God. Whether you accept it or not doesn't affect me. No, because I can't put you into heaven or hell. That's right. That's the decision that you make. But guess what? If I don't tell you the truth, then I put myself in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. And as much as I love everybody, I ain't going to hell for nobody. Yeah. Oh, no, I've got to tell this truth. And so I need y'all today to walk comfortably yes. in this holy yes. lifestyle. The benefits of a godly lifestyle. You have to obey this walk, uh, enjoy this walk in Christ. 
You have to enjoy. This is a this is a joyous, joyful, yes, beautiful walk. It's a walk of peace and comfort. Thank you, Lord. It is a walk in security. And you know my favorite scripture, one of them. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them that call according to His purpose. Don't forget that. Don't for we quote that every service. We quote it every service. Don't forget it. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them what are called according to his purpose. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks. Not before not because of everything, but in everything. Not for everything, but in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Concerning you. You have to know this. Yes. You have to know that you can do all things through Christ right. which strengthens you. You have to know that. Thank you, Lord. That's walking in the peace of God. He is our peace. Mm -hmm. That no man, no woman, nobody, nothing deceive you. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Can't lie, two eyes to make a mistake. Let not your heart be troubled. We are holy people. Yes, we are. The song says, been baptized in Jesus' name, spoken in tongues when the Holy Ghost came. So if you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost, then you are godly. And the benefits of a godly lifestyle belong to you. Don't reject them by tripping, by worry, getting bogged down in foolish conversations, arguments. No, none of the above. We believe what we believe. It's all in here. If it's in here, I'm not moving from it. I don't care how smart you think you are. If it's in here, I'm just going to do it right here. Keep it simple. See, if the way is so simple that a fool can err in it, then there's no reason for us to try to get deep in the word. It's so simple. It's written for a fool. It's written for the least of us. Uh, so I love being the least of us. And the simplicity of the gospel is our security. Because you don't have to be deep to be holy. You don't have to be, uh, you don't have to receive a degree to be holy. You just have to be obedient to be holy. Uh, you got praise. to see what God was imparting to you in this uh, video, in this message. And we look forward to seeing your face at 2516 Halls Mill, Mobile, Alabama, 36606. Now listen, if you need to call Pastor again, just give me a call, 251 Five nine one six six seven nine. You can email me at pastor at twocornerstone dot org. Pastor at twocornerstone dot org. We thank you again, and the blessing of God be upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.